What's up, guys? Episode 21. We got a mic now. Appreciate all your guys' comments and you listening and following. Today, I just want to talk about consistency because obviously this is something that a lot of people struggle with or else everybody would be walking around lean, strong, supple, everything, right? If you want to see the workout, if you want the details for the workout that I'm doing in the video, check the description below. If you want to apply for coaching, also in the description, but let's get into it. So this last week, I faced a lot of resistance. I was super stressed out and I realized like how hard it is to work out when you're that stressed. So I'm going to give you three actionable steps, three things that you can actually do to make consistency with your workouts more achievable, not psychological woo-woo, actual steps. The first is time. You must, instead of chasing a certain workout, like or not chasing, but let's say you have a certain workout routine that you need to hit. You've been hitting it, but some days it's just so daunting, you can't get yourself to do it, and you skip it because you're like, I just don't have the energy or the time or whatever. So what you need to do rather than that is commit to a certain time limit for the workout. So for me this week, instead of doing so many sets and reps or following a certain workout or plan or whatever, it was too daunting for me. Because here's the thing, is when you're so stressed or when something's going on in your life and you feel like you don't have time or you're facing this sort of resistance, the monster in your mind can be pretty big when you think of like all of the volume that you have to do in the workout. Like, oh, I have to get this many sets and reps of that and this many sets and reps of that. Like, that can deter people very easily. But if you say, hey, I'm just going to commit to 15 minutes or 20 minutes or for my case, 30 minutes. I'm just going to commit to 30 minutes, do a simple circuit like the one you see in this video, and that's it. I'm just going to repeat it. Repeat it. I'm not going to go for a certain number of rounds. I'm not going to be attached to how tired or how much of a pump I'm, pump I'm getting. I'm just going to set the timer for 30 minutes, keep doing this flow over and over. And once the 30 minutes is up, I'm done. And I realized like that is so much easier to get done and there's no excuse, right? Because people like to make time as an excuse. That's not an excuse. Everybody has five, 10, 15, you know what I mean? Like you can squeeze a short amount of time and it doesn't have to be 30 minutes. All of us are on different fitness journeys, right? I'm a fanatic. So 30 minutes to me is like, you know, bare minimum. But for somebody else who's not super consistent, who faces this resistance, you have to prioritize the consistency and this will make it easier. So set a time limit versus setting like, you know, going for a volume goal. Everybody wants to go from zero to hero, like super fast, but it's not just about the physical stuff, guys. It's not just about following the workout and getting the workouts in and hitting your goals and, and eating a certain way. It's not just about that because you have to get to the point where that becomes doable for you to sustain. So to do that, you have to build habits. We're all creatures of habit. So to build these habits, you have to lower the, the barrier to entry, shrink the monster in your mind by just saying, okay, you know, instead of doing this whole workout routine that might typically take me an hour and, and that deters me, let me just set myself like 20 minutes a day of something simple. And again, depending on where you're at with your fitness journey, that could just be push-ups, it could be burpees, it could be kettlebell swings, it could be a kettlebell circuit, whatever. But trust me, time shrinks the monster because you know you can clearly see the end. You clearly know like I just have to endure this for this amount of time and then I'm done versus something that you, you have a certain amount of volume and you might be so stressed that you might not be able to push the pace and you know it's going to take long and you have all these other things on your mind and work is important and bills and I can't do this right now, right? So shrink the monster, commit to a time. The second thing, and remember this is about establishing consistency because as Bruce Lee said, do not fear the man who does a thousand kicks in a day. Fear the man who practices one kick every single day. So that's it. You must do something every single day. And now everybody's going to be like, well, what about rest days? It's not about not taking rest days. I'm not devaluing the rest that the human body needs to grow, repair, heal, all that stuff. But what people don't realize is rest days doesn't mean you just don't do anything and just let your body heal like you're in some sort of like healing chamber all day, right? It's like, no. You don't have to redline yourself every day. I do something every day. Do I redline myself every day? No. More specifically, three days out of the week, I go hard, hard, hard. 
red line myself. And then for the other four days, I do something, but they're usually either light to moderate. And of course, as you grow in your fitness journey, that light to moderate can be pretty extreme for a normal person. You know, like a light workout for me might be 100 pull-ups, um, 100 swings, and 10 get-ups. That's nothing, you know, but to somebody else, that's like a whole freak that would take them over an hour, but that's fine. We're all at different places in our journey. So, but the point is, like I said earlier, we are creatures of habit. So if you, if you do not work to implement this habit, meaning ingrain it in your nervous system, which really only happens when you do something every single day, it's going to be hard for you to establish the habit. But once you establish the habit, no matter what resistance you face, it's still going to be hard for you not to do the thing, right? Like I might feel super tired and lazy at night, but it's really hard for me to just go to bed without brushing my teeth just because I've made that a habit. I've done it every night for years now. So if I don't do that, it's a clear something's off feeling. And the same exact goes with working out. If you do some sort of exercise every day, like for you, it might be, okay, I'm going to do 100 push-ups three days out of the week, then the other three days out of the week, I'm going to go for a 30-minute walk or a 20-minute walk or something. Super simple, but consistent. If you do that for 30 days, obviously you're going to see results, first of all, and that's the most important thing is seeing some sort of results, and then you can build. But the point is you've established the habit. It's going to be hard for you to not do that anymore because we're, we're all addicts. We're all addicts, and that's how our nervous system works. We become addicted to things. Addiction has a negative connotation, but in reality, you can be addicted to a lot of beneficial things, like working out, like eating healthy, like brushing your teeth, like taking a cold shower. These are all things, like even cold showers, guys. I, I still don't like cold showers. I've been taking cold showers for five years now, maybe even more, but I think five years, and... I still hate them, like meaning like I still kind of like, here we go, like first thing in the morning, cold, as cold as it can get, at least where I am, and, but I still have to do it every morning, I still, if I didn't do it, I would feel weird, I would feel off, so it's like, because it's a habit, the resistance that I face is no match, it's no match, because habits take control over you, so, and that's why addictions, like, especially negative ones, are really hard to break, because you've ingrained that in your system, so same goes for good habits. So and this is kind of shifting focus a little bit, but it's something worth talking about is instead of focusing on eradicating bad habits in your life, just focus on establishing new ones and being consistent in them. And then watch as the other habits that might affect these better habits start to slowly die off. Trust me, it works. But anyways, the final, te- the final actionable step is get a kettlebell. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not kidding, actually. I'll talk to you why I'm not kidding. But I'd say more specifically is make the workout super simple. Because simple gets results, guys. I mean, it doesn't... Even, like, the highest level guys, like me or, like, you know, even, like, bodybuilders or whatever you're into, a lot of the guys at the top, they keep it really simple. You know, they keep they focus on things. They practice things. Like me, I've been really focus on kettlebell swings you know and to somebody else that might be boring they want like all these different things but I want to do this and that but when you get to a certain level you realize the value and simplicity and it doesn't mean that things have to be easy simple and easy are not the same simple just makes it more doable more likely to stay consistent which means you're more likely to see results so what I mean by that is you know let's say you're really just starting out you haven't been consistent you want to see some results do 100 push-ups a day. That That's it. That's actually how I got started on this whole journey, by the way. Like posting on Instagram and stuff like that years ago. It really started with me doing 100 push-ups a day. And once I did that for 30 days, I started doing other stuff. You know, I started, okay, let me try pull-ups. Let me get more into pull-ups now. And you see, it, it just starts this effect. But just doing 100 push-ups a day for 30 days, you're going to see some results. Or maybe that's a lot. Maybe you do 50 push-ups a day or... You get the point. You have to make it super simple, guys. Super simple routine. Limit it to one, maybe two movements. And why I say get a kettlebell is because the kettlebell is the best way to keep it simple and still keep it as effective as possible. Because what you what you'll find is if you just stick with body weight and stuff like that, you want it because. 
we want to lower the barriers to entry, right? We don't want to have to go to a gym. We don't want to have to go anywhere but our house if we need to so that we have something to do at home. We have a set time limit we commit to and we do it daily, right? So if you have a kettlebell, it's so easy to hit every single muscle in your body. You can focus more on muscles. You can do full body workouts and you can get that bodybuilder's pump with the runner's high. And what you'll find, honestly, is sometimes when you do just body weight, for example, you kind of miss on that runner's high. Or maybe you do body weight and cardio. You, you sort of still miss that resistance from the gym, like a, like weights of some sort, because that's what really kind of gets that pump going to the next level. And that's why I love the kettlebells, because you get that bodybuilder's pump, you get the runner's high, you even get kind of a feeling of like, I just did a yoga class, depending on some movements that you might be doing. And again, it's extremely accessible. It leaves no room for excuse, guys. Like, you don't have to go anywhere. You just need one of them if you want to keep it extremely simple. And then again, once you once you establish the consistency, like, you're able to stay 30, 60 days consistent, not missing a day. Remember, not every day is hard. Some days, maybe you're just walking or hiking or doing something like that. If you can be consistent, then you can start to take things to the next level. And that's where the growth happens. Don't expect to see results or to get to like an advanced workout routine so quickly. Lower the barrier to entry with the time limit. Keep it super simple, super doable, not daunting in your mind. Craft something that you can do daily. That's maybe one, two, three exercises. That's again, not daunting to you. Exercises that you can do consistently and do it every single day. I, I, I just said that, but (laughs) lower the barrier to entry by, you know, having that plan in your mind, whether it be push-ups or pull-ups or bodyweight squats, or you have a kettlebell. And I honestly think that kettlebells are the way. That's why I'm so about these because they, they make it so easy to stay consistent. There's no excuse. There's really no excuse. And that's what I had to face this week when I was facing all this resistance, facing all the stress. I said, why can't I just take my kettlebell right outside in the sunlight, get some sun, get fresh air? All of these things are beneficial for your health. You know, you don't want to just be inside all the time. And then just set a time limit for 30 minutes and just go through the motions. I don't have to push myself too hard. I just have to do it. And then after about 10 minutes, you get going. It's easy. So, yeah, guys, well, I don't want to keep rambling, but this is what helped me. Stay super consistent, establish consistency, and now look, I'm addicted, I can't stop this stuff, and it's become my whole life. And if I can do it, so can you. And I wanted to give you guys some actual things to try, right? So if you take anything away from this video, just to make it super simple, time, limit, and every day. Those are the two main points. Set a time limit, 20, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever is not daunting, and do something every single day. And that, I promise you, will help you establish consistency. And that, furthermore, do not do whatever you're doing for certain results. Trust me, don't attach yourself to the results. Just don't do it. Do it for the sake of doing it. Do it for the sake of getting the result of consistency. Look at this as a consistency exercise. Because if you can, if you can win that, you're set. You will see success in the long run, I promise you. And that's what it's all about. That's what they all talk about, right? It's not the outcome, it's the journey. And it's actually true. Because obviously, the more that you like the journey, the better the outcome is going to be. So you have to teach yourself to like the journey and understand that your body is a pet that you love, right? We, we fight with our body a lot. Our body wants to do something, doesn't want to do something. We want to fight it. Treat it like a pet that you love. Don't abuse it. Make it super simple, you know, like a dog. Like if I'm going to take my dog out, I'm not going to make him run sprints every time. I might just go for a walk every now and then. But I'm taking him out because he needs a little bit of something. So you got to look at your body as a pet that you love, that you want to live a long time, that you want to nourish and care for. So don't be so attached to forging your body a certain way or looking a certain way or anything like that. Just establish the consistency. And once you establish the consistency, I promise you everything will follow naturally. And that's what it's all about. Do not fear the man who practices a thousand kicks in one day. Fear the man who practices one kick every single day. And that's it, guys. If you're watching until now, you like this. Don't lie to me. So go ahead and smash 
that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Appreciate you all. Peace out.